I just, I don't understand it. I literally can't figure this out. Oh, hey, maybe you can help me out. I've been working all day on trying to pass level 99 in Moda Mollish. Some of you might remember that a few weeks ago, I, I was almost finished with my magnificent building. But then my sister interrupted me and I knocked down a wall. Since then, I've been working on my self-control and have patiently rebuilt my wall. Even when my sister came in to remind me about dinner, I didn't throw my headpiece. I paused and I selected my words carefully. I said, yes, sis, I'll be right there, sis. Huh? Huh? What do you think? Who has some self-control now, right? Well, by now, you probably know what self-control is, too. Well, today is our very last day to talk about it. Hey, let's read its official definition together. Ready? Self-control self is, is choosing to, to do, do what you should do, do not, not what, what you, you want, want to do. do. Sometimes I want to lock my sister out of my room because she can be frustrating, but that's not what I should do. Sometimes I want to eat every cookie in the house, but that's not what I should do either. What I should do with my sister is pause and select my words carefully. And with the cookies, I should know when to stop. That's what self-control is all about. And the Bible tells us that self-control is really important. In fact, that's what our memory verse says about self-control. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Proverbs 25, 28. That's pretty serious. A city with no protection is no city I want to live in. And a person without self-control is not a person I want to be with. Speaking of self-control, I'm trying really hard not to lose mine on my video game. It's Modulemolish, the best game ever, and it's brand new 2022 edition. I've been reading this guide all day, trying to figure out this last level. Only everything it tells me to do, I do, and nothing happens. It's all wrong. All wrong. Hey, Pastor Kevin, did I hear you say something about Mod Demolish in a guide? Yeah, I was just reading the Mod Demolish 2022 guide, but for some reason it keeps leading me in the wrong direction. Uh, Pastor Kevin? Yeah? I hate to tell you this, but that's the wrong guide you're trying to follow. That's for Mod Demolish 2021. That's last year's guide. How in the... Wait a minute! I told my mom which guide to get. I told her, 2022, Mom, I said, it's very important that it's the right year. But does she listen? Did she get me the right year? No. And now I've been following the wrong guide, and it has been leading me the wrong direction. I'm going to call her. And I'm going to tell her just what I think about her getting me the wrong guide. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think you need to practice some of the things we've learned this month. Now, Pastor Kevin is right about one thing. Following the right guide is important in everything, actually. If you follow the wrong guide, things are going to, d to go wrong. If you follow the right guide, things may not be perfect, but they'll be much, much easier. Don't believe me? Well, let's see what the Bible says about it. It's a verse I found in that special book we've been talking about all month long. You remember, it's the book with all the really wise advice that God gave to the wisest man who ever lived. Proverbs, above everything else, guard your heart. Everything you do comes from it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. In other words, what you put in your heart, what you listen to with your heart, what guides you, that will determine everything else in your life. So we have to be very careful about what we look at to guide us. Pastor Kevin, let's review what we've learned so far this month about self-control. And if you still want to call your mom when we're finished, you can. Week one, we talked about... Oh, yeah, that was the week I learned that a person who is self-controlled is like a city with a very strong wall built around it. 
that was the first time I realized that self-control actually helps us. It protects us. Very good. In week two. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember. Week two was when I got angry and threw my brand new headpiece against the wall and broke it. I learned that I should pause before I lose my temper. That was actually not a very good week for me. I can see why. Let's keep going. My voice-activated microphone. I remember this. I learned that our words have power, a lot of power, and I need to select what I say very carefully. Our words can help people or harm them, but we choose whether or not to use self-control with what we say. We can help people or hurt them. The choice is ours. Actually, this was even harder than week two. This is when I learned that too much of a good thing is a bad thing. I learned that I have to learn when to stop or risk showing up in pajamas for church and answering a red pepper instead of a ringing telephone. Right. Whether it's watching too much TV, playing too many video games, or eating too many sweets, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Let's keep going. You know what? I need to call my mom. Really? After everything we've remembered together, you still want to call her and yell at her for getting you the wrong guide? No, no, no. Actually, I want to call her and thank her. Because as we've been going over all these lessons in self-control, I've realized how much self-control it must take to be my mom. She's amazing. Well, you're right. But before you do that, why don't we see what our last week of self-control is all about? How did you... What is... It's the right guide for my video game. It's the Modern Molish 2022 guide. It is. Your mom realized she picked up the wrong one and dropped this one off this morning. I thought it was the perfect illustration for today's lesson. Having the right guide is important. Well, if this guide is supposed to help me on my video game, what guide will help me the rest of the time in life and stuff? I'm glad you asked. The Bible tells us that we must guide what we think about. Our thoughts, the ideas that guide our hearts, are what control our entire lives. And we have to have self-control when it comes to the things we think about. Listen to this truth God has for us. It's found in Philippians 4, 8. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, Think about those kind of things. In other words, use God's words to guide your thoughts. That's our bottom line for today. Let's say it together on the count of three. One, two, three. Use God's words to guide your thoughts. So I guess what you're saying is that the Bible, God's word to, words to us, is our ultimate guide for life. Yes. I'm saying that what you put in your mind matters. If you watch a scary movie, you're going to be scared at night. If you hang out with friends who disrespect adults, you'll find yourself disrespecting adults. If you read books or listen to music that have bad words in them, those bad words might fly out of your mouth too. I'm saying that God's truths in the Bible are the best things you can use to guide your life. I'm saying that if you put God's words inside your mind every day, his words from the Bible, life won't be perfect, but it will be much, much easier. This has been a great month talking about self-control. I've learned so much. You know, it really is so important to guard your heart. Let's take one more look at our proverb for today. Proverbs 4.23 Above everything else, guard your heart. Everything you do comes from it. If you don't know where to start when it comes to guarding your heart, start here. Set some limits about what you watch, what you listen to, what you read, and who you spend time with, because the things you put in your heart and mind will eventually come out, one way or another. Another thing you can do is ask God to help you control what you think about. You can't control everything that pops into your head, but you can ask God to help you know what to do with it. He can help you focus on the things that are good for you. And most importantly, read God's Word. Fill your heart and your mind with God's words and wisdom. Read about how much He loves you, 
Remind yourself often that Jesus said he would be with you always. The one thing to remember today is use God's words to guide your thoughts. I want you to think about the thoughts that go through your mind. Think about the things that you listen to and the people you surround yourself with. Are you letting God's words guide you? Let's pray and ask God to help us. Let's pray. God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you that inside of its pages are your words, your wisdom, and your instructions for the best way to live. Help us to guide our thoughts using your words. Help us to only think about true, noble, right, pure, lovely, respectful, and praiseworthy things. Guide our thoughts so we can protect our hearts. We love you, God. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now take a few moments to talk about these questions with whoever is watching with you today. I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson and look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great week.